fired him. So if you're going to ask me about Ernie Harwell, I can't tell you a lot of nice things about him. Just last month, Schembechler collapsed, and doctors implanted a device to regulate his heartbeat. He had a history of cardiac problems, including a heart attack on the eve of the 1970 Rose Bowl. Now keep in mind, the first year I had a heart attack at the Rose Bowl, and I came home, and I was recuperating at home, the first man in my house was 48. They will always be linked in the mind's eye, both now gone, ironically, on the eve of a game given life by the games and the men they coached. Glenn Bo Schembechler, a titan in maize and blue, a Michigan man. Certainly a Michigan man, he was certainly... It was a privilege to get to know Bo, to cover him a little bit at the end of his career, but just to, to hang around him. He was such a vital, energetic guy, and, and all of those who care about him have had to kind of get used to it, a bit of unease with his you know, frailty in recent years, because in a lot of ways it doesn't compute. The guy was so strong and so tough and was so vital for so many years that the idea of Bo Schembechler being in ill health and now passing away just doesn't add up. Bo Schembechler, uh, put it mildly, he had a temper. Uh, he was very emotional on the sidelines and, and, a, and a superb coach. I got to see Bo uh, from all elements, and he was a guy beyond what you saw on the sidelines and the, his legacy of coaching and all the rest of it. Bo could fill a minute up. Uh, he, he was like a, a personal air pump. You'd, there'd be a normal minute, and then if you spent it with Bo, it was like this inflated minute because there was so much energy and so much largesse, and uh, he could he, he could he could buy a hamburger with you, and you'd be talking about it for 20 years because there was sort of a just a, a feeling that you were around a larger than life character. Bo never left you without five minutes of coaching slash fatherly advice, kind of a, a word or something that touched you that you took with you to the next person you met or the next day that you went on to. It was just fun to be around and, and you just couldn't help but come away inspired because he just had a great way about him. Somebody said, how would you describe him? He was his own man. Everybody called him a little Woody, and, and he might have been, but he was a little Woody because that's just the way Bo Schembechler was. He never said anything politically correct. He tried to be correct, and he certainly was. But frankly, I'm uh, shaken. <laughs> I, uh, there are a few people that just seem indestructible, and you don't expect to ever hear that they've died, just a few, and Bo Schembechler uh, is one of them. One of the things that, that always surprised me, but then again, it shouldn't surprise you, is that I, when I would see him once every blue moon, he still remembered my parents' names. Mm. You know, and, and, and here's a kid that, that wasn't a high school All-American, that really didn't, you know, I, I didn't set the world on fire, but I played really hard, but he remembered my parents' names. He remembered my, my two brothers and my sister. You know, that's, that's the way he approached Coach, I think that's the way he approached life. Penn State football coach Joe Paterno on Bo Schembechler. Bo was a giant. He was a great football coach and person. He was a great supporter of college football and the way it's supposed to be played. He was a great ambassador for Michigan and was proud to represent Michigan. He was an interesting guy and fun to be around. He was the kind of guy you would want to be your friend. You always knew where you stood with him. I look forward to seeing him at Big Ten meetings. I respected him and enjoyed being around him. He was a super coach, and I'm not sure he was, he's gotten his due as far as being one of the truly great football coaches of all time. I am going to miss him. Bo Schembechler continues right here on the show. Their jerseys, our jerseys, their helmets, our helmets, the fans, the people that have played in the game, the Eddie Georges, the Archie Griffins, the Desmond Howards, the uh, Anthony Carters, you know, Charles Woodson's, you know, the, the game is, it is what it is, man. There's no getting around it. You know, you had a close connection to Bo Schembechler, so I can obviously see how emotional this is and how hard it is for you. What about the guys that take the field for Michigan tomorrow? I mean, it changes the tone of the game slightly, to be sure, because it is sad. Do they get any kind of emotional lift? Does it impact their performance or the way they approach it in any way? What do you think is going through their minds tomorrow? Uh, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to have these guys ready. You know, obviously, these guys didn't grow up on Bo Schembechler. A lot of these guys didn't even know about Bo Schembechler until they came there and they met him for themselves. But from what I told, he spoke to the team yesterday. 
gave them some words of encouragement and inspiration. So they definitely know who he is and what he means to the program. So with uh, his passing today, it's definitely going to have those guys ready. And I'm sure everything that they give out there tomorrow on that field, every inch they gain, every yard they make, is going to be for Coach Schembechler. And ultimately, we'll try to get that win for Schembechler. You know, the next Michigan guy that tells me that they're not going to win tomorrow will be the first. And Michigan guys are not saying, I like our chances if, or things will go well if it breaks this way. Every Michigan guy I've talked to this week said, it's our time. We're going to win this game. I would imagine you're no different. No, not at all. You know, I believe this is our time. You know, Ohio State has got us the last two years in a row. But everything that we need to happen stacks up for us this week. I mean, just the change in, in defensive coordinators, just the way we've played offensively, our front seven, Lamar Willie, Allen Branch, you know, the way Mike Hart runs the ball, the improvement of, of Chad Henney, you know, the rising of Mario Manningham. Everything that we have and everything that we, that we do, that we've implemented throughout the last 10 games, will show tomorrow. And I say we definitely win this game. I'm not scared at all. Hey, Braylon, I appreciate you. Thanks for making time today. Good luck. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah. All right, you've got his take. Next up, we will turn it over to the forum. We will look at the loss of both Shem Beckler and Handicap tomorrow. Coach Carr, and the program has been pretty good since then. I think uh, a great leader leaves a great legacy, and he's done that. And uh, he, said, he set some strong uh, 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 criteria to be for the program, and I think that uh, you know, the people that can be behind him embody uh, what kind of man he was as a leader because he formed them, developed some pretty strong coaches. All right, of course, the game is still being played today. We know how much this week has meant to you before the, uh, the big news today. How, how much do you think this uh, news sort of dampens this weekend, though? Uh, you know, the game has to be played, and I think that it's a reminder to all of us that, you know, there's, there's a, a bigger matters than, matters than football. But I think Coach Bo would have won uh, uh, the team to win the game, and they're going to go, they're going to play hard. It's a game, it's, it's a big game. It's a fun game, and I think we, uh, this pretty much puts it in perspective. It's a game that we have to enjoy and uh, that we have to win. Uh, of course, none of these uh, Michigan players ever played under uh, Coach Bo, but, of course, they know about him. They, they uh, practice in his hall. They participate in his hall. But uh, what kind of impact, what kind of emotions do you think that they'll be feeling going into the game, uh, going into the game tomorrow? Uh, I can't say, but I know that uh, uh, there's going to be some emotion about the whole uh, uh, death of one of the great coaches that was uh, part of the program. Uh, Coach Bo used to come in, uh, in uh, the, the football building all the time, so I'm sure some of those guys got to meet him. So I think just the emotion of uh, losing someone who embodies, embodies Michigan is going gonna, is gonna to be uh, an emotional uh, 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 burst for those guys. Of course, Lloyd Carr knows him very well. How much do you know about Lloyd Carr, and what do you think he'll tell us team tomorrow? Uh, uh, coach Carr recruited me. Uh, he's, uh, he's a great coach. I think it's going to keep uh, the players focused uh, on the game. But, uh, you know, this was, uh, I guess, a, a rivalry that really Coach uh, Bo uh, started or has really uh, magnified. And I think that uh, uh, Coach Carr is going to remind the guys of, uh, of that, and, and hopefully we can come back with a win. Yeah, th this game is going to be huge. I mean, I remember back in 95. Uh, Do you remember that year? What, what was That's 1995? A long time ago. A long time ago? <laughs> Should we bring up the archives back ago. in 1995, what you did against an uh, unbeaten Ohio State team? You remember what you did? Yeah. Uh, over 300 yards. Oh, that was a long time ago, but you, but you remember that, huh? Uh, I get reminded every year. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what does this week still mean to not just the players that are currently playing, but the former players? You guys really get into it, too. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is the game. Uh, you look at uh, uh, the, the history. You, you have a coach, who've, uh, Coach Cooper, who's, went, who's won uh, 10 games uh, uh, almost every year and get, gets fired or uh, resigned because he can't beat Michigan. So that's the magnitude of the game. And I think that for us, uh, uh, there's a lot of trash talking going around this game. Uh, former Ohio State players, some of the Ohio State fans, I always hear it. Uh, this time of the year, and I have a lot of friends from Ohio, so to me it's an emotional game, and, and uh, I'm praying and that uh, Michigan come, uh, comes up on top. Uh, you talked about what happened to Coach John Cooper, who only won two times in his uh, 13 times playing against Michigan. Now, Lloyd Carr, he's just one in four in his lifetime uh, playing against uh, Ohio State. How much pressure is on him? Uh, this pressure, it's a, it's a big game. But Coach Carr, I think, has done a tremendous job. Uh, I think that uh, you know, the talks were, were about to let to, uh, to fire him because he couldn't beat Ohio State. But uh, 
he's a great coach, and uh, this is a big game. He has to win it, and, uh, and uh, I, I believe we will. All right, final question. If this game's in Michigan, knowing what you know now, uh, coming off of today's news, is there any way the Wolverines lose this game tomorrow? If we, uh, if we run the ball, we control, uh, uh, we play good defense, I think we're going to win the game. Uh, the best defense is to keep the offense, uh, the other offense off the field. And if you run the ball, you're going to keep Troy Smith on the sideline and you have a better chance of winning. I, but I think that we're ready. We have a good defense. I think uh, we're going we're to come up on top. All right, so you're expecting Mike Hart to get into the 300-yard game like you did back in 95. Hey, Tim Biakabatuka, thank you so much for your time and joining us under these circumstances. Thank you for having me. All right. A couple of minutes ago, uh, Michigan was getting off the bus, arriving at Columbus, Ohio. There's Coach Lloyd Carr. Of course, we will hear from him. He's uh, set to step to the podium. And when he does, we will bring that to you here on ESPN News. The uh, death of Bo Schimbeckler dead at the age of 77 due to heart failure. The uh, Michigan football team has arrived in Columbus, Ohio, getting set for tomorrow's big game against Ohio State. Coach Lloyd Carr said to have a press conference shortly. When he steps to the podium, we will bring you that press conference right here live on the hot list. All right, let's bring in Angelique Shingalis, the uh, of the Detroit News standing by. Uh, Angelique, thanks so much for joining us, first of all. And what is the uh, reaction around the state? You're still in Michigan right now. Well, I am still in Michigan, and I've talked to so many of Bo's former players, and I'm, I'll tell you, I mean, some of them sound like they are close to tears. Some of them have been crying all day. But most of all, they talked about how much Bo Schembechler touched their lives and how lucky they felt to, to have been part of his life as, as a player, as a, a friend, and, and having him as a mentor. And, you know, th this is a guy who shaped so many young men's lives, and, and that's what these guys, that's, that's sort of the theme I'm getting from all the players I've talked to. What are some of the players saying about how he did touch their lives? What did he do for them off the football field? Well, he really made them realize that, that they have to be ready all the time. Some of the guys I talked to, I talked to Reggie McKenzie a little while ago, said there were days you hated this man but mm. because he actually demanded the best from you every day, every minute. And, and if you didn't deliver, you knew you disappointed the man. And what Reggie said was no one wanted to disappoint Bo. And that's really something that he's carried through and, and carried through his, his pro career and, and in life. And so many of the players have really uttered the same kind of sentiments about Bo Schembechler. He's had uh, a number of uh, health problems over the years. Just last month, he collapsed, had to be taken to the hospital with heart problems, uh, died today of heart failure. Uh, he was just out and about, from what I understand, yesterday. So does this come as a, a sort of a mild surprise that he's dead? Oh, I think so. I mean, I, I think talking again to some of the other players that, that I've talked to, that they just, you know, I just spoke to John Wengler, and he said, you never expected Bo Schembechler to die. You just expected him to always be there because he always was there. And, and when these guys needed to talk to somebody, when, you know, they talked about how he was like their father, you know, and that, those are the kind of conversations they would have with Bo Schembechler. And I think it's just hard for people to grasp, people who, who knew Bo and loved Bo, that he is gone, and because he did, he did cheat death so mm -hmm. many times. When you look at his, at his health record, we've heard from players, we've heard from, heard from coaches, and, and everybody who wants to talk about this. But what did he mean to the University of Michigan, in your opinion? Well, I think he really was at this stage in, in his life, and for Lloyd Carr, who always preaches uh, the tradition of Michigan, I think he was that link that Lloyd Carr always wanted his players to to grasp and understand, and, and he could just say, go talk to Bo, and, and Bo was always there in Schembechler Hall. He maintained an office there. The door was always open for reporters, for players, current players and former players, and I think that a lot of the current players will tell you that, that they talked to Bo frequently and asked him their advice about his advice about how they're playing, how they should go about school. I mean, he was always there to, to offer his opinion and, and his advice. And believe me, Bo liked to give his advice. <laughs> yeah, we just heard from Tim Biakabatuku who said that uh, Bo stopped him during his sophomore season and told him to hit the hard, uh, uh, hit the hole a lot harder, and he became a better player after that. Uh, what do you think, when it's all said and done, his legacy will be? And do you think he was bothered by never winning a national championship? I think he was bothered by that, of course, but, but I think that obviously his legacy is the Michigan-Ohio State rivalry mm -hmm. and, and Woody and Bo and the 10-year war. And, and I, you know, he said it again on Monday when he addressed all of us. That's what he lived for. He lived for that game in the 1969 game in particular when, when you know, upstart Bo Schembechler and his Michigan team upset the, the, the number one ranked Ohio State team, the unbeaten team. And, and he related a story uh, just on Monday about how 
later that year at a banquet, Woody looked down and, and said to Bo, you'll never win a bigger game. And when Bo said on Monday, he goes, you know what, I never did. And, and I think that's what people, people just remember it's, it's Woody and Bo, Bo and Woody. They will be forever linked, and, uh, and that, that's the way it should be. Yeah, for Michigan, that is the only game, the Ohio State game. Uh, how often did you uh, interact with them? And, and, We've been asking people to share their favorite story of Bo Schembechler. I Quite frequently. I mean, I did an interview with him a couple weeks ago when he went back to Channel 7 to, to tape his show that he always did, which is where he was today doing Big Ten Ticket. And, and I really, I, I never covered his teams, but I felt like I've been covering Michigan since 1991 and, and really developed a very good rapport with Bo Schembechler. And he'd always say, you know, you're my favorite female sports writer. <laughs> and I'd wait for the, you know, the punchline, you're the only one I know. And, you know, it was, he was funny like that and, and very respectful. And, and we did talk a lot about personnel, and, and he was always very candid. And uh, just very, you know, he always had time to talk. So that was, a, for, for a reporter, you're, you're, you're very appreciative of that. Well, you've been around Lloyd Carr. You've been around these Michigan players. How do you think that uh, this news is going to impact their play tomorrow? Well, in talking to some of these players today, I think that Lloyd Carr will be hit hard, and, and I think he's obviously mature enough and understands that this, this is part of life, and I think that, you know, he will, he will not use this to motivate his team. That would be far too macabre, and I, and I don't think that's his style. But the players know. They know what, what Bo Schembechler meant to Lloyd Carr. They know what Bo Schembechler meant to the Michigan program. I think that they take some inspiration from this, but, but for Lloyd to use it tomorrow, absolutely not. But I, I think that he will go into that game without a doubt with, with the heaviest of hearts. And how that affects him coaching, I, I don't think it does. I think when, when, the, when, the first, when the first play happens, I think that you know, when the, he will be back in his mode, in the zone that you have to be to coach in the Michigan-Ohio State game. All right, that is Bo's favorite female sports writer, Angelique Shingalas <laughs> of the Detroit News. Angelique, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, thank you. All right, just a few minutes ago in Columbus, Lloyd Carr, speaking of him, addressing his team, bringing his team together at midfield. What will he say about the death of his mentor, Bo Schembechler? When the press conference begins, we will have it for you right here on ESPN News. Well, sometimes it seems like a big college football game is uh, more important to the former players than the current ones. And despite what NFL colors they put on, those players bleed the colors of their alma mater. That will be maize and blue for Braylon Edwards. Of course, his father actually played at the University of Michigan and, of course, was coached by Bo Schembechler, who passed away today. Uh, Braylon, first of all, thanks for hanging out with us. I know you're getting ready for your big game with the Browns this weekend. But uh, I want to talk to you about uh, the coach, Bo Schembechler, and what he meant to you. Uh, Bo meant a lot to me. Like you said, my father played there. You know, I've known Bo my whole life. Uh, it's, not, it's, too, it's not too often that a player grows up, you know, knowing the organization, knowing the coach, and then turn around and playing for that same uh, organization or collegiate team. So, you know, today is, a, is obviously a heavy day for us. You know, I love Bo a lot. You know, he taught me a lot about what it meant to be a man, not just necessarily a football player. So uh, I have great stories and great memories of Bo Schenberg, and his memory will live on through his uh, current and former players. Uh, tell me, how's your father reacting to this? Uh, I talked to him. We had a moment on the phone. Uh, we talked for a while, and uh, it's hitting him a lot harder than he thought it would. You know, we actually had talked about this possibility not too long ago with all the uh, things that were coming out with Bo and just the different elements and things that he had going on. But um, it's, it's hit my father a lot harder than he thought. You know, he's, he's really kind of kind of shaking right now, and uh, I can hear it in his voice. So, you know, all I want to do is just be a son, be there for him. Mm -hmm. you know, obviously, it's hitting me hard, but I got to be there for my father. So it, it's hitting a lot of the, the, the 70s and 80s players real hard. Your father ever share any stories uh, with you about Bo that you could pass along to us? Nah, we got Bo Schenberger stories for days. I mean, in fact, I have some of my own. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first time I met Bo Schenberger, I was uh, four years old. It was at a baseball game. <laughs> And uh, I remember him punching me in my stomach and telling me, do everything that man says. He was talking about my father at the uh -huh. time. Then, and every time he saw me from then on, he would punch me in the stomach and, and tell me to do everything that man said. And then when I first got to Michigan, you know, he punched me in the stomach, but it was for different reasons. He told me uh, that I would never be the kind of player that my father was. <laughs> and, you know, it was, it was, I mean, it was joking, but at the same time, it was Bo. You know, it was Bo trying to get the best out of me. And so he hit, my, he hit me in my stomach you know, all the way until I was 22 and uh, my last year at Michigan, which he, he, whis he whispered to me in my ear at the Michigan banquet. He told me that I'd become a Michigan man. So, you know, I got both Schenberger stories for days. 
Yeah, we just uh, finished talking to Tim Biakabatuka, a former player who never played under Bo, but of course was saw him in the hallway and told him how it, he how Bo gave him advice and made him a better player. What advice did he give you that made you a better player? He just told me one: believe in myself. You know, never never under, underestimate the things that I can do, or never doubt. No matter what the situation, the circumstances, or what's going on, you know, if you're giving everything that you can, you know, that, that's all that you can do. And the biggest thing he said is never blame anybody. You know, never blame anybody for anything that's going on. All you have to ask yourself is, are you doing something? And if the answer is yes, then continue to do what you're doing. The answer is no, then begin to do something that can be positive for mm -hmm. whatever the situation is. You know Lloyd Carr. You know this is affecting him uh, very hard right now. What, what do you think he's telling uh, his players right now? Uh, first and foremost, I think he's just telling his players that, you know, giving him some, you know, what Bo is, what Bo means to the school, what Bo means to the organization. But at the same time, I believe Coach Carr is a smart man, and I don't think he's telling his players to, we have to go out there and we have to, to win this one for Bo, or we have to do this, because the last thing you do is you want, you know, guys out there trying to do, go above and beyond and do things that aren't characteristic of what they've already been doing, trying to win a game for someone especially game of this magnitude. So I'm definitely sure that they've had a moment of silence. I'm sure they've talked about it. I'm sure that they, especially Coach Carr, I know this is hitting him up real hard. So he's probably having his own moments in private. But the main thing that they're trying to do is stay strong and focus on the task ahead, which is the Michigan-Ohio State game. And that's what Bo will ultimately want us to do, is to move forward and, and go into this game tomorrow and get this win. Some of these current players are some of your former teammates. Have you been able to reach out to them? Have you been able to talk to any of them to find out and gauge their reaction and what kind of impact this will have on them tomorrow? I've talked to them through, uh, through on the phone, on the text message, and, and they're hurt. You know, everybody knows who Bo Schimbeckler is. You know, you, you don't come to Michigan and within a year realize who he is and what he means. So, and actually, he just spoke to the team yesterday. So for a lot of these guys, this is traumatizing because he just had a great speech for him yesterday. Got these guys really riled up to play. And then here he, he dies less than 24 hours later. So a lot of these guys are shaking, and I believe that's motivation enough for these guys. Lloyd Carr doesn't have to say anything to these guys in relation to let's go win one for Bo. These guys already know what the time is, and everything that they have tomorrow, they'll give to Michigan for Bo. All right, and on the lighter note, let's talk about the game a little bit. It's still, the game's still going to be going on. They get out there, and it's still going to be intense. It's going to be a rivalry. I hear you've been begging Romeo Cornell, your coach with the Browns, to, to let you go. Any luck there? The main thing that I was concerned about is if I do go to the game, just being back for the 8 o'clock meeting on Saturday night and obviously driving, you know, with the 3.30 uh, kickoff. You figure the game's not going to be over. It's somewhere around 7, 7.30. And then it'll be a two-hour drive back, so I wouldn't make it. But finally, I came up with the alternative, and I, I chartered a helicopter. So I'll be there. Uh, I'll be there at kickoff until the game's over, and I'll be back in time for my meeting at eight. Bowling? You chartered the helicopter? Nah. That, that's first-round pick money for you, right there. You getting a helicopter? Nah, it's not like that. Man. I don't like to have it like I that. Miss, I couldn't miss this one, man. I hear you. I hear you. Well, what's it been like for you this week? I mean, you you play professional football in Buckeye territory, but obviously you're pro Michigan. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's pretty much like this all year long. But you know, this week it really was. Uh, it really culminated. You know, everybody down here hates blue, and they hate Mays. They hate our school. They hate the people. They hate the state. So, uh, it's been an interesting week. You know, it's been uh, actually right before you guys called, I had some uh, some drunken old state fans ride by in a uh, a truck outside my house yelling O H I L. So I mean, that's just kind of some of the things I've seen all week. But I can't wait till tomorrow because. After we beat uh, beat the brakes off the Buckeyes, you know, I think it's going to take the life right out of this state. It's something I've been waiting for for a year. Man, the trash talking goes to the different level when you're talking about this game. You, even your former Michigan teammate Larry Foote going back and forth with uh, Mike Doss uh, earlier this week. Uh, your Browns play Foote this week, and you guys got a little trash talk going on because the Browns and the Steelers. How's that dynamic going to play out on Sunday when you see your boy on Sunday? Uh, you know, it'll be fun and warm-ups. I get to see him. You know, we talk a little jargon about whatever happens tomorrow. And he and I are both from Detroit. Like, I've known Larry a long, long time. We played for the same little league team and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. So, it'll be fun talking to him. But once the game starts, we're enemies. You know, last year, he actually cheap-shotted me oh. on an interception by Joey Porter. So, uh, you know, when you get out there in the game, man, everything goes and it's not friends or same colleges, especially in a game like this. You know, this is a rivalry. 
Pittsburgh and Cleveland hate each other. So when we go out there tomorrow, it'll be all business. All right, that's on Sunday, Saturday. Before I go out there we'll, Sunday. On Sunday, well, real quickly before I let you go, I know who you're going to say is going to win the game, but why would they win the game? Why will Michigan win? I just think there's so many changes and so many things that we have going for ourselves. One is our new defensive coordinator. You know, he's coaching, he's coaching his butt off this year. He has the players in, in, in form. He has them in the right place at the right time. He has them believing in, his, in themselves as well as the scheme in which they're running. The defensive line, the defensive front is by far the best in the nation. Uh, you have Allen Branch. You have Lamar Woodley. You just got guys that are reckless and abandonment out there. You know, Prescott Burgess at linebacker. Defense is solid. Then you come back with a balanced offense. You have Chad Henney, who's playing one of his best seasons. Mike Hart in the backfield, who's definitely a Heisman candidate. A healthy Mario Manningham on the outside. An emerging Adrian Arrington on the other side. Uh, always consistent Steve Breston in the slot. I mean, it's, it's so many things that we have going on for ourselves, man. I'm very, very excited to see what we can do, and I'm definitely confident in what we can do tomorrow. You sound like a good analyst there, man. You might have a future after your playing days over with the Browns, but of course, we know those playing days are still long, long, long way away from your retirement. Hey, Braylon Edwards, thank you so much for hanging out with us here on the Hot List, man. Hey, thanks for having me. All right. All right, let's bring in our college football insider, Joe Shad, who's in Columbus for more on the news of Bo's death. Uh, as the news travels, Joe, what's the mood around there in Columbus? Well, you know, the uh, Ohio State uh, people, the people of the Ohio State Stadium have welcomed in the Michigan football team. You know, Mike, they took a three-hour drive uh, from Ann Arbor to Columbus, and I'm told that those players, a lot of them, got word of Bo, Bo Schembechler's death when they arrived for their bus trip, and uh, Lloyd Carr addressed it with the team there in Ann Arbor, and, uh, you know, a lot of those players had a lot, a, con a lot of conversations with Bo Schembechler. You know, obviously he wasn't their coach, but he had an office space there at the Schembechler Center, and uh, he would uh, be in at least a couple of times a week. So it'll be interesting to see how Lloyd Carr handles this tomorrow. You know, I spoke to somebody close to Carr who said that he does not anticipate, just like Braylon Edwards said, Lloyd Carr making this a win-one for the Gipper type situation. Really not necessary with everything that's on the line tomorrow as it is. Uh, you, speak, you were on a phone conference with Bo just yesterday. What, what was Bo saying all week, and how could this death, his, in, his death impact this game? You know, I wish that I had gotten a chance to meet Bo Schembechler. Bo Schembechler. I, I never did. But uh, I thoroughly enjoyed about a half an hour teleconference that uh, we were able to listen in on yesterday. And, of course, he was given the reasons why he thought Michigan would win. And he was also explaining why there should be no rematch. He was adamantly opposed to a rematch. So if this is an instant classic tomorrow, uh, remember that Bo Schembechler did not want a rematch in this game. But he was a great storyteller. And uh, he talked about, of, his, of course, his days uh, coaching under Woody Hayes. And, and when uh, Ohio State had lost to Michigan, he distinctly remembered Woody Hayes picking up the film projector the day after and throwing it across the meeting room, something he said he'd never forget. All right, that is uh, Joe Shad hanging out with us from Columbus. Uh, thanks so much for hanging out with us, Joe. Thanks, Mike. Of course, much more reaction on the death of Bo Schembechler when the hot list returns. Never a greater ambassador for the University of Michigan or college football than Bo. Personally, I have lost a man I love. As for the Wolverines honoring uh, Bo during today's game, team officials say there simply was not enough time to get anything done on their helmets or on their uniforms. But obviously, players and coaches will be thinking about Bo today and carrying his legacy with them in their hearts. The Wolverines band also made the trip down here to Columbus, and I've been told that they will be wearing uh, black armbands on their uniforms. Today when they perform. Now for more on the Ohio State Buckeyes, let's send it over to Bonnie Bernstein. Well, Lisa, Ohio State will honor Bo Shea.